Now, a few months ago, I did a uh, series of videos on the uh, Scorpion BFS. This is a reel that I uh, called an affordable BFS reel, finally. Now, currently at about $230 in Japan, um, that's still a tough pill to swallow for someone who kind of is thinking about dipping their toe into uh, bait finesse but doesn't want to jump all in and uh, spend a ton of money on something that's uh, so specialized and limited in function. So enter this. And it is not called the whirlwind, but the reel inside this box is uh, taking the BFS world by storm. Now granted it's a small world, but uh, nonetheless it's taking the BFS world by storm. And there's a couple of good reasons why. Now, uh, BCSG Fishing did a uh, couple of great videos on this reel, and he's kind of the guy that put this reel on the map for uh, the bait finesse guys. And uh, he did a shootout where it uh, compared pretty favorably with uh, a lot of his uh, really ultra tuned, expensive uh, finesse bait casters. So that really got me interested. And because of another attribute of this reel, uh, I placed an order and here it is. So let's take a look. Here's the uh, schematics. Okay, let's take a look at here. You get a little reel bag. Looks like that's about it. All right, let's take a look at this thing real quick. Okay, so it's pretty obvious that uh, Daiwa copied this reel when they uh, chose the color scheme for their Tatula Type R. <laughs> Let you guys take a good look at it before I do my customary inspection and uh, notes. Okay. Okay, so I took a few minutes to uh, give this reel the once over or the twice over. And uh, let's go over the manufacturer specs first before we go into the uh, things that I found out about it. Now, this is called the Suranoia XF50. And I believe they chose the number 50 because of the shallow spool right here. Now, uh, it only comes in a 6-6 six, six to 1 gear ratio, at least for now. Where is the gear ratio? There it is. 6-6 six, six to 1. Um, it has 10 ball bearings. And they say that uh, the spool bearings are what they call Japanese ISC spool bearings. So I guess they're a little bit higher spec for better casting. Now the frame and side plates are made of um, carbon graphite or whatever you want to call it. And you can tell by palming it. Now they say it's got a ceramic line guide right there. And they're claiming that it has four kilos of drag. So that's roughly about nine pounds. And uh, it's got a brass main gear and brass pinion gear. I wonder why they went with brass for uh, bait finesse. But there's also a uh, deep spool model for of this reel, I should say. It's probably why they went with uh, brass. So overall, um, it's smooth enough. It's kind of heavy turning the handle, to be honest. I don't know if there's a, a bunch of grease in there or not, but uh, it's probably that uh, heavy brass main gear. Thumb bar feels good. And of course, that shallow spool that's so coveted in the bait finesse world. So uh, let's get some numbers on this thing. Okay, so this reel feels really light. At least the body does. A lot of the weight is on the uh, handle side the handle is metal and yeah take a look at these knobs 
these are actually aluminum knobs here. They feel really nice. Now I bet they'll be slick as hell if they get wet, but uh, I'll go more into these knobs later. So let's pop the scale out, see what this thing weighs. I think I need a new scale. Okay, so you're looking at 6.8 ounces. So it's fairly lightweight, but in BFS terms, that's kind of on the heavy side, but it's not heavy at all. Of course, the Scorpion BFS weighs about an ounce lighter at 5.9, but who cares? Now, let's weigh this spool. Now, to open this reel, it reminds me of the Pissafun reel, so I'm thinking it's coming from one of their, uh, probably the Banax factory. Okay, it's got the standard Korean style magnetic brakes, but uh, take a look. Now, average the average Korean magnetic brake configuration only has five magnets. Now, this actually has six but it does look like the magnets are a little bit smaller. Okay, so we're gonna get a weight on this spool because spool weight is very important in the bait finesse world. Now it's got a bearing on the spool, one of those high spec Japanese bearings. So assuming that bearing weighs 1.5 grams, you are looking at an 11 and a half gram spool. So, as compared to the Scorpion, I can't remember what this spool weighs off the top of my head, but 11 and a half grams, and the Scorpion is 8.8. .8. Now, of course, um, the spool on the Scorpion looks to be much smaller. This is 32 millimeter diameter, and this looks like it's probably a 34 millimeter just by putting them side by side and of course the scorpions spool is noticeably shallower but um, guys are saying this thing casts light baits pretty good so uh, on the water versus uh, on paper is often two different things Let me pop this back in now the brakes have uh, numbers as you can see minimum all the way to max and I believe there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen okay so there's twenty two clicks for a total of uh, twenty three brake settings now the thumb bar is solid, it's no mush, it's a nice short positive click, but it has no kind of texture on it so if this got wet I could see that being really slippery. And also the line guide is positioned pretty far away from the spool. I don't know if I said that already. And also the, of course the drag clicks, now the drag, um, star doesn't feel very refined in its clicks but the spool tension also clicks and the spool tension has a it's like the phantom where there's hardly any movement in between clicks hardly any mush or slop so that's nice that's a feature that the manufacturer listed okay so holding it in hand and turning it um, it's pretty solid so that leaves us to the biggest thing about why this reel is taking the BFS World by Storm. It's only $57. So for $57, you get uh, an entire reel. Now, why is that important? Now, let's go back a few years. Now, if you wanted to get into bait finesse fishing a few years ago, um, the cheapest option was to see if there was an aftermarket shallow spool for your reel. Now there's a lot of companies in Japan that make 
those kind of spools for certain reels but a lot of them were expensive as hell I mean at least well over a hundred dollars for the cheapest one now let's flash forward um, to today now with the big boom of the uh, Chinese made uh, fishing tackle um, there's some companies like Ray Studios who have made their own shallow spools for uh, a lot of the more popular Japanese reels from Daiwa, Shimano, and some Abu Garcia. And they're much more affordable at uh, no more than $50. Now since this reel is only $56, you see uh, where I'm getting at here. So just spend $6 more and it looks like the spool is roughly the same as that Ray's Studio spool that's $50 itself. So just spend six more bucks and get a whole new reel. Now remember I was talking about the knobs here. Now these are a, uh, a knockoff of an aftermarket Shimano um, knob that uh, one knob itself costs more than this entire reel. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of funny. So as far as the handle goes, it looks to be 90 millimeters, but I have another reel here that has a 90 millimeter handle for us to check. Yep, looks to be a 90 millimeter swept handle. And because I have this reel out here, it is blatantly obvious that the Daiwa CT Type R is copying the color scheme of the Suranoia XF50. <laughs> Just kidding, Daiwa fans. Don't start crying. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take this reel trout fishing with me tomorrow, side by side with the Scorpion BFS and I'm going to be throwing lures that are really small. We're talking 2.3 grams and some of them may be even lighter than that. And we're going to see what this reel is made of. Now if it can hang even remotely close to Scorpion BFS then uh, this this is a uh, yeah this is going to be quite a uh, bargain and this may be a gateway reel for a lot of guys who are wanting to dip their toe into a bait finesse but not wanting to spend a whole bunch of money in case they don't really like it. So hopefully I'll be able to stick into some trout tomorrow for you guys and uh, show you what happens. Okay I am here at my uh, favorite trout fishing spot. Hopefully the trout are biting. Looks like a, a good day kind of overcast so the visibility won't be that great for them but I have the XF50 and I also have the <clears throat> Scorpion BFS and these are the two setups we're going to use today to try to catch some trout and I think I left my net in the car, damn it. I gotta turn around. Okay, we're gonna start off with the XF50. And we're gonna be picking something that's not too light. This is a 3 16th ounce Lucky Craft Pointer 65. And we're gonna work our way down in weight lower and lower to see how uh, well it handles these light lures. Turn these brakes all the way up to maximum. Set the spool tension. Alright. Okay, that was pretty bad. Alright, these brakes are pretty strong. 
So I'm going to turn him down. Okay, that's not bad. When the brakes are on maximum, they are really strong. Okay, that was into a direct headwind. So the brakes are almost a half and it's pretty, really controlled. Okay, so the trout seem to be pretty small in here and they are not taking that 65 so we're gonna go dip down a little lower this little jerk bait is gonna be a really good test for the XR 50 because it only weighs 2.3 grams so it's about half the weight of that pointer 65 So I'm going to turn my brakes all the way up. Okay, let's let her rip and see what happens. Okay, I can tell you that did not want to go anywhere. Maybe that was asking a little too much for the rod as well. Let me cast with the wind and see what happens. Okay, casting with the wind was okay. I'm on. Feels like a good one. Oh yeah. Snagged a little rainbow. <laughs> Where's my net? Ah, nope, looks like a brook. Shoot, I'm about to fall and bust my ass. Okay, we got success. If this thing would just calm down. Nice little brook trout on the XF50. And a quick release. So, looks like I'm about to get into it now. So I'm gonna take this jacket off. Hopefully the uh, rain will kind of stop. Okay, so I can tell you this. Fishing this in cold weather is going to suck because of these metal knobs. Okay, that only went about 20 feet and the accuracy was bad. I think I've found the lower limit of this rod. I'm sorry of this reel. Did. But yeah, I think I found the lower limit to this, uh, this reel. 2.3 grams. The accuracy is struggling. a dude across the river with the spinning reel. He's probably wondering what I'm doing out here with a bait cast reel. Yeah, this, uh, the accuracy with this, uh, smaller lure is definitely suffering with a sidearm cast. Okay. 
Okay, so going to back to the bait finesse basics. Just a nice, smooth, easy stroke. Definitely helps. I know I have a tendency to just whip them out there. But uh, I'll try to remember that. Okay, let's switch up to the Scorpion. Okay, we're switching up to the Scorpion BFS. Same lure, just a different color. Okay, the since the spool is so light, I don't know if you guys can see those dudes out there wading in the middle of the river. But we're going to start out with the external brakes on. Five. Man, the rain is starting to come in this way. That solved it. There's one. Feels decent. Whew. Nah, it's a little one. <laughs> little guy. Okay, so definitely tell you the, the Scorpion BFS handles this small jerkbait really easily compared to the XR50. There's less wind, but I'm getting a little bit more distance, it seems like. And it's a little easier. But that's to be expected. The uh, XR50 has a, a much heavier spool in bait finesse terms but it was handling those lures impressively. So the distance isn't that much better, just the control and the uh, ease of casting is a little bit better. Because you got to remember, these lures, they're only going to travel so far, no matter what reel you're using. Oh, yep. There's one. Little guy. Oh, he's a little bit better. Bigger than the last one. Man, on this ultralight setup, these tiny fish fight super hard. Oh, he's hooked pretty good, too. Oh. Come on, buddy. Come on. It's funny, all those guys I see down there, I don't know if they're using fly or just spinning. They're not catching anything. But the bait finesse setup is starting to pay, pay off. Okay, I can tell you that the Scorpion probably, ultimately, has about 10 foot on that XR50. Maybe a little less when it comes to distance with this particular lure. 
Okay, a couple more casts and we're going to switch back to the uh, XR50. Just wish it had a better name than XR50. So yeah, the Scorpion BFS definitely handles this lightweight easier than the XR50. But the XR50 handles this weight surprisingly well. I would probably say handles it better than the uh, Corrado 70. Way better than the Corrado 70. And probably better than the Tatula SV. Even though I've never tried to throw the lure this light with the Tatula SV. Ooh, that's a night and day difference between the XR50 and the Scorpion BFS throwing this little lure. Okay, that that's pretty good. I think it's heavier. Oh. And it pays pays off on the first cast. It's uh, a decent one for this river. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna. You guys see this pretty fish looks like a brook definitely not a brown looks like a brook okay the retrieve on this XR 50 now granted this is not a high resistance lure and I'm not really even I'm using my rod tip to work it, it is super smooth These metal knobs, they're cold, but I think it adds to the uh, sensation of being smooth. I wonder if they'll hit a black jerk bait. Oh, there's another. Oh. Man, he's like doing uh, flips in the water. All right, come here, buddy. Another little brook trout. Let you guys take a good look at this. I don't know if you guys can see the little blue dots that have like orange in the middle. But brook trout are the prettiest fish. Okay, so I'm pretty impressed with this reel so far. It palms comfortable. I mean, it's not going to palm like the scorpion, of course. But for this size reel, palms good. It's really smooth. casts a lot better than expected definitely enough to make it a good solid beginner bait finesse reel for someone who's trying to get into bait finesse but you don't want to spend that 300 bucks just for an SS Air and then another 200 bucks for a, a specialty rod You can spend 57 bucks and get this thing right here. Okay, time to change up spots.
Oh, here's one. Got another small one. So I caught that on a Shimano Cardiff pin spot. It's a little bit smaller profile. Okay, I see them busting over there. I think I can reach it. Okay, so this pin spot probably weighs a little bit more than an eighth of an ounce because it's a sinking model. So it's getting out there pretty good. I'd probably say about 20 yards. Maybe 25 or 30. Okay, got one. Looks like a good one. Feels like a good one. Eh, it's, a, it's all right. It's another little brook. Another. This color is money. Feels like he's foul hooked. Easy release. <sighs> okay, so back from fishing, and I really hope you guys enjoyed the uh, in jacket GoPro point of view because it's here to stay now before we get into this um, I want to tell you guys that I'm pretty impressed with this reel considering the price $57 now once again this has a light spool but in bait finesse terms it's actually really heavy compared to a, a true dedicated bait finesse reel so to give you guys a context as to why I was impressed I'm gonna to have to show you guys what lures I was throwing now the first lure that I threw and caught no fish on was the Lucky Craft Pointer 65 now this is supposed to weigh 3 16 of an ounce which is roughly 5 grams so the scale says 5 point 5.3 so a little bit over 316 
Now the second lure I threw was the Cardiff Pin Spot. And I thought this was uh, pretty heavy, but as you can see at 3.3 grams, this is weighs less than one eighth of an ounce. And now the hooks are stuck in there. Okay, there we go. Okay, the next lure I threw, which I was really surprised that it, how good it casted, is this uh, imitation duo realis jerkbait. It's a cheap imitation from China, but it caught fish, so I'm not complaining. And that casted, actually that weighed 3.16 grams, so under one eighth of an ounce as well. Now the big shocker was how it handled this lure. This is the Lucky Craft Pointer 48. And this weighs only 2.3 grams. So that's, in bass terms, um, that's 3 30 seconds of an ounce. So would you ever think of throwing a, a lure this small? So let's compare the XF50 performance with the Scorpion. Now the only lure that I threw on the Scorpion was this lure and as far as the distance I would say the Scorpion while it did beat the XF50 it was only by a couple of yards. Now the advantage for the Scorpion was the definitely the ease of which it threw that lure and the accuracy. I could sidearm cast with this with no problem while with the XF50, the sidearm cast um, required some uh, adjustment on the release point. But yeah, for $57, it's really smooth. Um, the knobs did get cold, but uh, after a while, I didn't care. Palm's really good. It's got a lot of refined features. And uh, yeah, I definitely think this should be your first finesse bait caster and uh, you may not throw lures as light as this but if you throw things like shaky heads, um, drop shots, Ned rigs, weightless flukes then this thing should be money for, the, for those uh, light lure presentations. So you can find this for about $57 on AliExpress. I think it may even be on eBay or Amazon and the good news is that you can find a lot of rods that are very capable of throwing lures like this for well under a hundred bucks some of them go for you know less than 50 so for less than a hundred dollars you can come out with a pretty decent bait finesse combo now of course this is a recommendation for you guys who are kind of wanting to uh, check out bait finesse but you don't want to drop you know two to three hundred bucks just for the reel and then two to three hundred bucks for the rod because it will get pretty expensive in a hurry so the Serenoia XF50 definitely gets two thumbs up the performance was uh, unbelievable for the price as well as the uh, spool weight I didn't think it was gonna handle that light lure as well as it did all right guys, thanks a lot. Oh wait, you guys thought it was over? Come on now, you know me, I like to measure casts. So even though I said that the XF50 was uh, virtually equaling the Scorpion BFS out on the water, uh, I wanna see what it really does and get some measurements. So I'm gonna put it up against these other BFS reels and that would be the Daiwa SS Air, the Shimano Aldebaran BFS XG, and this is probably the most popular bait finesse reel in the world right now. And coming from the Abu camp, I don't have a bait finesse reel from Abu Garcia, but I remember I had this. 
the Revo Elite Aurora 64 Limited. I'm gonna take it out of retirement and put it to work one more time. And the reason I'm doing that is, as you can tell, it's got this really shallow spool. It's only 32 millimeters and it's really lightweight. I believe it's about 10 grams. So it's actually lighter than the XF50. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out some, a couple of really light lures and see if the numbers match what my eyes saw out on the water. All right guys, thanks a lot.